It's the finale to the state of war and it's war because that's what often elections are in this country. After months of campaigning, multiple phases of polling, top netas sniping at each other, we've reached the stage where in just a little over, less than an hour from now, the electronic voting machines will be open in five states across the country, more than 600 constituencies, including India's most populous state. And that's why what happens today makes an important trend. It could be an important trendsetter for what happens in 2024. The last counting day was in West Bengal, where the BJP came away uh, not looking so sharp. If the BJP does well, as the exit polls are predicting, it will be a huge boost for Prime Minister Modi himself because it shows that there isn't much anti-incumbency building up midway into his second term. And just imagine what this would mean for Yogi Adityanath. For 37 years, no one's come back to power a second time. If he's able to overturn history and achieve that, he really sets himself up as the first amongst equals in the pantheon of BJP chief ministers. Absolutely, uh, uh, Rahul. I think, you know, when the road to Delhi, particularly for the Bharatiya Janata Party, leads through Lucknow. And you've seen that in 2014. That's, that was the pivot around which the entire BJP campaign ran. It's not just... The fact that it is the politically politically the largest state in terms of the MPs it delivers, it's Mr. Modi's karma bhumi in a way. It is perhaps uh, the kind of state, the moment you win it big time, and the BJP has now won three consecutive elections there, 2014 Lok Sabha, 2017 Vidhan Sabha, and again 2019 Lok Sabha. Against the odds in 2019 when Akhilesh and Mayavati came together. Not just one, but smashed the oppositions to Smidhreen. That's right. So, in a way, it has become their sort of base from which they can then expand to other parts, which is why it's so critical. In Bengal, which you just mentioned, the BJP was hoping to sort of breach the fortress. It was Fortress Mamta. Here it is their fortress. That's the big difference. Uttar Pradesh now is the BJP gud. And from that gud, they will hope to spread to other states. But it's not just UP. Rahul, remember, out of the five states that are going to the polls today, the BJP is in power in four. Now, traditionally, you would have thought anti-incumbency, COVID times, Bengai, Berozgari, that's one narrative. That narrative has had to be uh, combated by the BJP. Can they triumph will, I think, become important in a way to set the stage, as I said, not just for 2024, but even Gujarat and Himachal later this year. And one final point, Punjab is about Kaun Banega challenger. Remember, it's not just a big day today for the BJP. It's a critical day for the Congress. Yet another day for a party which has struggled in recent years. If you can't win Punjab or can't hold on to Punjab, then the Congress today is really struggling for relevance across a critical and part of the Goa country. And Uttarakhand, if they can't convert anti-incumbency into victory, where there is manifest anti-incumbency against the BJP governments in these two states, it raises serious questions about the Congress's ability to convert uh, opportunity into victory. Joining us this morning, live from the residence of Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath, one of the biggest players who stake not just in this poll, but his political career, is likely to get a big leg up if these exit polls are right. Maushmi Singh is with us from Lucknow. Uh, we've got Milan Sharma joining us from Kalhal. Kalhal is the constituency of Akhilesh Yadav. He's, consisting and he's contesting an MLA election for the first time. And we've got Ashutosh Mishra joining us from Gorakhpur. Uh, that's the, that, that is the temporal head from where, Gorak, uh, from where the Goraknath Mutt exists. And uh, a lot of the religious salience that Yogi Adityanath has comes from the city town of Gorakhpur. With us in the studios, I want to introduce our guests joining us this morning, starting with Sandeep Shastri. So welcome, great to have you with us. Rahul Verma, I see, has his sharpest new suit out. So Rahul, good morning, welcome. We've got Sharath Pradhan, who understands the ins and outs of uh, UP politics, has tracked Uttar Pradesh for decades. Welcome, sir, great to have you. Uh, on my left, Rahul Srivastava, our national affairs editor. He's been on the road, traveling non-stop. We tried our best to bring him back. He just wouldn't come back. Uh, and the advantage is you'll hear from him as he brings you his ground insights, as will Preeti Chaudhary, who, with her election dispatches, has been in Goa, she's been in Punjab, she's been in Uttar Pradesh, and she'll tell you what she picked up on the ground. So welcome. And I want to go across first to Moshmi Singh, who is at Yogi Adityanath's residence this morning. Give us a sense of what's happening with the Maharaj camp this morning. Uh, Baba Ji, as he's called, or Baba Yogi Adityanath, he must be very enthused seeing what India Today and Access My India are predicting in the exit polls. 
A very good morning to Rahul, uh, to you Rahul and all our viewers and everybody in the studio. Uh, so the excitement, the anticipation in the air, uh, spring in the steps and uh, everybody waiting with bated breath. It is a Kayamat ki raat is over and now intizar ki ghadi is on uh, Rahul and I can tell you that the Netas in Lucknow, we've been speaking to a lot of them uh, for the past two, three days. Uh, they have been uh, waiting for, with bated breath for these results. But we are stationed outside the most powerful address, as I said, uh, Paj Kalidas Marg. And I remember five years back, uh, you know, we would we would see a flurry of uh, Muslim women, you know, going inside. That was the time when uh, Baba had taken over, as he is called. And uh, thereafter, the triple talaq issue was soaring. Uh, we covered that, and and a, lo a lot of uh, water has flown in the Gomti River ever since then. But if you could read between lines. This is uh, a template that you read of 2007. That was when the Samajwadi party, uh, you know, had actually signed off. And uh, interestingly, you know, uh, this time round, uh, whether uh, Baba will make a comeback, will actually decide uh, his stature in the party because that will be a part of history. He has been in Gorakhpur uh, for the past three days, uh, camping at, in, at the mud and, and didn't, in fact, interact much with the media but he was very emboldened the BJP camp emboldened by our exit poll he did thank the pollsters but whether that uh, uh, poll will be uh, if the poll is proven true then we can really say that uh, this is the address that all the spotlights let will me, be on let me and stop you for a moment Adityanath, let uh, me stop you for a moment uh, Maushmi, because yes all eyes will be on Yogi Adityanath there will be a few eyes also on Akhilesh Yadav remember he has been the real challenger to Yogi Adityanath in this election. All exit polls suggesting UP has become increasingly bipolar. Milan Sharma is joining us from Karhal, which is Akhilesh's constituency. Remember, this is the first time Akhilesh is con contesting a Vidhan Sabha election. This is the gud, in a way, of the uh, Yadavs, uh, a constituency where Mulayam Singh interestingly campaigned for Akhilesh uh, in this election. Milan Sharma, where is Akhilesh Yadav? We know that Yogi Adityanath has been uh, shuttling between Gorakhpur and Lucknow. Uh, Akhilesh Yadav yesterday complaining about EVMs, uh, pointing out to what he claimed was uh, uh, abuse of protocol in Varanasi led to the suspension of, of an officer. Where is Akhilesh Yadav? Well, good morning to you, Rajdeep uh, and uh, Rahul. I am in Mainpuri, and uh, we know that Akhilesh Yadav is currently in Lucknow. And uh, certainly, the decision and the destiny of whether uh, Lucknow and what will be uh, the fate of Akhilesh Yadav will be decided, especially for the Karhal seat from here in Mainpuri in this particular counting center. And as you said, yes, various allegations have been leveled by the Majwadi party chief calling this the last election of democracy. Throughout the night, we saw how Samajwadi party workers were guarding outside strong rooms and kept a vigil throughout the night. They said we don't trust even the administration cars that are coming in and going, which, are, uh, which was uh, a situation that was created across, not just in Mainpuri, but uh, many states. But certainly, as you said, that uh, it's very important that this is the first time a former chief minister, Akhilesh Yadav, was earlier MLC, is contesting his first MLA election from here. And certainly this being a Yadav stronghold, this being a Yadav belt, because Karal happens to be close to the Samajwadi party guard of Sefai as well, Main Puri will see the Yadav vote deciding the factors behind Akhilesh's victory. And certainly we'll uh, look at uh, a large voter share that is expected because the exit poll also, as we showed uh, on Access My India, uh, predicts a win for the BJP. But this particular seat where SPS Bagel was fielded against Akhilesh Yadav will be an interesting contest on the results day to day. It would be a crushing blow, Rajdeep, to Akhilesh's old morale and to opposition as they build up to 2024 if these exit polls come out to be right. Because you've got uh, economic distress, you've got unemployment, you've got COVID pandemic management, mismanagement. And if despite all of that, the BJP gets 280 plus, 
then the opposition really begins to wonder what do we do to take on this juggernaut? Absolutely, and that's why I said, uh, you know, the, it's not just about winning Uttar Pradesh, the scale of victory. If it's a big victory, as some of the polls are predicting, that will demoralize the opposition because even in sort of not so good time, not so achedin, if the opposition still is unable to sort of make a dent in the BJP's fortress, it will be big news. I think you've also got to realize, for Akhilesh Yadav, it could be his fourth consecutive defeat. It could be a, a, a defeat because 2014, 17, 19 and now 22 if he loses. For Mayavati, it would be a fifth consecutive defeat going back to 2012. Unfortunately, our netas are defeat proof. Unlike in the West, you lose, you step aside. In India, you continue because... The difference because though is, Akhilesh is still growing his vote share. That's right. From 22, which is what uh, you know he got in 2017. If he goes up 35 plus, which is what the exit polls are predicting, it still directionally suggests that he has a future. Mayavati, not just losing uh, the non jat of Dalit vote bank, but any non-Dalit vote she has, according to the Access My India numbers, is just frittering away and moving away from her, largely to the BJP. So her political future now has a big question mark over Absolutely. And, you know, let's, let's go across the table because good morning, everybody. Uh, let's get from each of you very quickly, snapshots, 30 seconds each. What is the thing you're most looking forward to today? Preeti, why don't you start since you've been travelling across? Well, I'll give you both uh, Rajdeep Punjab uh, and uh, Uttar Pradesh. In Punjab, uh, like I said, I want to see, I saw the chemistry lie with the Ahmadmi party, does the arithmetic lie with the Congress. I want to also, you know, bring this out. In his last interview to us, Arvind Kejriwal has given it to us in writing. Uh, this time around. Oh, you brought that long Yeah, I brought it along. Nicely this done. is D-Day. This is Judgment Day. If I don't bring it along now. What did he say? He's written and he's told us that Channi is going to lose both his seats. Uh, Bhagwant will win by a margin of over 51,000. And the Badals, all five of them will lose all their seats. Okay. That, is, that is what he says. So this is what, you know, I want to see whether... Uh, the chemistry is with the Aam Admi Party along with the arithmetic in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, you know, is there a silent wave? That is what the exit polls predict. I hark back to what I heard in Gujarat last time because then as a reporter, that's what happens. Naraz hai par gaddar nahi. Naraz hai par gaddar nahi. Rahul Srivastav, what are you looking forward to? You're the man from Uttar Pradesh. Aapka Pradesh hai, mere dost. Aapki janma bhoomi hai, aapki karma bhoomi hai. Rajiv, I think I have to see whether Rashan, Prashasan and polarization have become the mainstay for the BJP as far as winning election is concerned. You see, since 1990s, there has been a lot of shakedown as far as the caste equation is concerned. If the BJP retains the vote it got last time, it means that the equations have, come, have settled down for the BJP. And despite anger, they don't vote against the BJP as in Gujarat. That means somewhere there is acceptance of the BJP, so much so that BJP's uh, problems vis-a-vis -vis the regional players have been decimated in Uttar Pradesh, Razi. BJP is uncomfortable with the regional players, but in UP, it has triumphed over the regional players like Samajwadi Party and the BSP, and it has become, become virtually the mainstay as far as politics of UP is concerned. So you're looking at whether the BJP can maintain that momentum. Oh. This side of the table, let's start with you, Dr. Shastri. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Namaskaram uh, from namaskar. your part of the world. Yes. Uh, I think three quick trends. I think we are looking at a possible sweep in two opposite directions, one in Punjab and one in Uttar Pradesh. And of course, the smaller states of India, typical of their trend, are seeing a very tough contest because you see no real party system clearly emerging in those states. Mm -hmm. But for me also today is important to look at which direction the Congress is going. Because if it does not do as well as, uh, as it would like to, as our exit polls predict, mm. I think we are looking at a opening up of the space in the opposition to challenge the BJP. So I think these three developments is what I'm looking at today. Ashutosh Mishra joins us from Gorakhpur, which is where the Goratnath Mati is. And Ashutosh, there must be a huge amount of anticipation in Gorakhpur right ahead of Maharaj's results coming out because if the BJP wins big, make no mistake, the biggest winner of the day would be Yogi Adityanath. Ashutosh? Okay, okay, we'll try and go back to him in a moment. But uh, 
You want to quickly uh, give a uh, finish off with our 30 second uh, first uh, comments? Rahul Verma, what are you most looking forward to today? The magnitude of victory in Uttar Pradesh and Punjab. Because that will basically tell us... It's not the direction. You virtually said the exit polls are right. You don't predict any surprise, any upset today? I'm always ready for surprises, Razdi. But I think given the consensus among pollsters on the direction, it's very less likely that it will over... Victor will overturn. So it's now about whether BJP gets, say, 220 in UP versus whether it gets 300 plus, right? Yes. That's the big and, question. And, and, and the reason is because it will basically, as everyone is saying, it will open up... Uh, uh, the possibilities going forward to 2024, both the new challenger for the BJP as well as cannibalization of Congress going forward. Right. Okay. Sharad Pradhan, very quickly. Well, uh, I feel that, I mean, considering that uh, the... Uh, because you've always been saying that it will be a tough fight. You yeah, still believe yeah. it's a tough fight. I, I still believe it's a tough fight. I'll be quite surprised if the, uh, the exit polls turn out to be true. And, uh, but the fact of the matter is that if that happens, that means that the Hindutva there has been a silent Hindutva wave, which is what has overwhelmed everything else. Because otherwise, economic distress, corona mismanagement, all that has been just set aside by the people. No, but if people wonder why it looked like there was uh, unhappiness on the ground and the results are different if they actually are, part of the reason is that the BJP's vote share in comparison with 2019 is actually coming down a bit. The Samajwadi's vote share could potentially be going up quite significantly so, directionally, both those two trends are true. But the fact is, Amit Shah, Prime Minister Modi have been able to stitch a rainbow coalition which is so big in terms of its caste and religious arithmetic that despite the SP being on the resurgence, they're still nowhere close to being able to dislodge the BJP. Look, Rahul, if the BJP wins the kind of majority that our exit poll is saying, it is a remarkable victory because then you're sustaining a 40% plus vote. Not easy. Which means that Please even... You got that Kejriwal note. Did you bring your article? I'm sure Rajdi is going to be flashing. No, no, I, 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 let us not say anything too early. <laughs> it is there in print, 25th of February, before the exit polls came out. The fact though is that I think what will be significant when a party wins 40% plus, even in a, what seems to be a narrative of anti-incumbency, right. then it suggests an emotional connect. I believe Mr. Modi, this is my view, has established a certain emotional connect with people in Uttar Pradesh. That mind space, ki Modi hai to mumkin hai. That's not true in any other state in the but manner can I, can I see in Gujarat and in Uttar Pradesh. Yes. that Yogi Adityanath too has built an emotional connect of his own, in addition to the Prime Minister's emotional connect. And Rajat Sethi will build on this, that it's not, Prime Minister of course is your captain, but in Uttar Pradesh as vice captain, Yogi Adityanath, whether you like him, whether you dislike him, whether you like his saffron robe, think of it as an advantage or it is, he has built a connect which is more than any other chief minister that the BJP has at this moment. Absolutely, and I think Rahul, uh, uh, Yogi Ji's connect, not just in Uttar Pradesh, but his growing footprint across the country is something to be looked into. I think 10th of March, whichever way results go, is going to shape India's politics for the next 10 years minimum. It is such a vital day today. I don't know if you're understanding the, the ramifications of what comes today. If Yogi Ji wins today, you can clearly understand that what's going to happen coming back into UP, such a big state, it will have ripples in the BJP also. Uh, having a, no, such a strong leader. He sets the deck. Whether um, anybody likes it or not, he sets the deck for what happens later. He's not sir, shaking the tree just at this moment, Rajdi. No, no, but I, he's telling you I after mean, having delivered such a big victory, if that's what it happens. Remember, all this panditri is subject to what happens in the end. No, of course it uh, is. But I will challenge you. My first challenge okay, is that this go. is about Mr. Modi. Without Mr. I Modi, Yogi without Mr. Because Modi is not the same force. Let's be clear about this. We have seen, and that's why this is interesting. Since 2019, listen carefully, since 2019 general election, the BJP has lost an average of 12% of its vote share in the state elections. Therefore, if it is able in Uttar Pradesh to retain its vote share, it's enormous in arresting that slide because I believe that here Mr. Modi is on the ticket. It is not just when people are going into the polling booth in UP, unlike in a Bengal, unlike even in a Bihar, they see Mr. Modi also Can on I the ticket. Can I counter you? No, 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 no. You're saying, Rajdeep, Rajdeep, you don't agree. Rajdeep, Rajdeep, no, I don't agree. It's, it's his cup of moving. Rajdeep, Rajdeep, you love cricket. Let me give you a cricketing analogy. If you're the Mumbai Indian franchisee, you've got Sachin Tendulkar, suddenly now you have a Virat Kohli as well. Yes. Kohli is not challenging Tendulkar. Tendulkar will play out his innings, but when yeah, Tendulkar's absolutely. time is done, you now have a Kohli in the wings waiting to take over who will have the Kohli 
era of uh, cricket or, or the yogi era of politics. It's you, separate. It will happen you later. You could well be right, Rahul. You could well be right. All I was, all I was trying to say that in my view, in Indian elections, we tend to take these leaps of judgment all too soon. You know, you could well have a situation where next year Congress wins Karnataka and perhaps wins, uh, you know, a couple of the North Indian states where I believe the Modi factor is not as overwhelming as it is in UP. You go to UP, Mr. Modi just dominates the mind space. You have to talk to people after five minutes. A woman I spoke to in Eastern UP, she first speaks about Yogi. Prashasan is about Yogi. But the moment you go into Russian, you go into, in a sense, ki, uh, you know, Modi ji to hai, Modi ji ne prayas kiya. He has managed to capture the mind space. I'm not saying, I'm not pitting one against the other. But Get it's pit. not competition. I'm not pitting it's one against... It's about one era I ending agree. and another starting. Yes, Whether Modi... Complimenting Rahul, what we don't, we have to, we have to remember, it is not just double engine ka administration, it is double engine ka polarization also. So you cannot ignore that yogi factor. He has been able to create a cult of his own in Uttar Pradesh and you cannot write him off. It's absolutely yeah, impossible. Yeah. He's there. You know, all of this but is a bit disparaging. Cults just sound a little something nasty. Something we are all missing no, out. So the fact is, no, he, he's got, for example, when we were in Prayagraj and somebody was describing Yogi Adityanath, he just got emotional. emotional. He started crying. He's choked up. I haven't seen this for anybody else apart from uh, Prime Minister Modi where somebody is describing a modern day leader. They get so excited describing that person that that person started crying. This is a reality. You cannot go away from this fact. Well, well I, I wish to point out, going by Pradeep Gupta's uh, Access My India survey, I, if you believe that bulk of the non Yadav OBCs went for the BJP, then it is not Mr. Yogi Adityanath which has brought, brought the victory. Mind you, it is that surge of those votes which, which we all believe, according to the exit polls, then it is the Modi factor which dominates. Let, uh, uh, you why are you thinking of it as an either or or a binary? It is this plus I, that. I think I, I, Yogi Adityanath is being overrated. Think, okay, you, you believe I, overrated, yes. Uh, so I, I think Yogi has an important role to play in this election. Absolutely. And for the reason, because law and order is uh, as important par part of the campaign platform, Yogi appeals to the BJP base and given what he has managed to sell on the law and order front, that is what is bringing the women vote. Preeti wants to jump Very in. Very interesting. As a reporter, the double engine that we talk about, what I picked up was that it's the Prime Minister Narendra Modi who represents Vikas development and it is Yogi Adityanath who uh, represents faith, Astha. You know, so and, that, and when you bring both of them together, this is the perfect storm for the BJP because then you have both, you know, you straddle both worlds. You have faith and you have development. Perfect least... storm in the perfect state. At the end yeah. of the day, please, uh, you know, this is my belief now. Every state now is very distinct to the other. There is no one size fits uh, all. It works in Uttar Pradesh because there is a complementarity. Does it, did it work in Bihar? The BJP struggled to win because Nitish Kumar was facing genuine anti-incumbency. So I think, Rahul, every state needs to be looked at differently. That's where I differed slightly with Rajat Singh. Today will be the start of another no, yug. Let me complete that yeah, story. Yes. See, if if uh, uh, SP comes in and wins this, they dominate the opposition landscape. If Aam Aadmi Party is successful to the extent it is, it will create significant dent not just in Punjab but also in Uttarakhand and in Goa. And so in Himachal Pradesh yes, and, and right. Gujarat possibly. So you are seeing an increasing footprint of a very new party. Sure. So every no, which but, way but that I want look, to, you know, you're right when you say it's the start of an era because 19 years as MP, 5 years as Chief Minister and a potential second term uh, he's only 49 years old. That's He'll right. be 54 by the time his second term gets over. Provided, and remember, I keep saying, provided all of this is true, uh, after five hours, he'll be 54 when he's uh, 10 years as chief minister, two decades as a parliament. member of parliament, as a man who, in his state, which is the most important state of the country politically, people think he's done a good job. It doesn't matter what you think. Sure. People in no, Uttar no, Pradesh, I, if he gets these kind of numbers, think, see, think he's know, done I, a good job. I will let me throw a delicious future prospect. I don't know whether you and I will be there. What if 2029 or even 2034? You have Yogi Adityanath, who by then will be about about 60, versus an uh, uh, versus an Arvind Kejriwal, who also will be in his early 60s by then. You know that could be the future shape of an of an but Indian as election. As for our exit polls, Rajdeep, the youth doesn't think so. 
So the youth which will be in that poll position at that point of time doesn't concur Very that Yogi Adityanath point. The one, is the going one to be demographic a where the BJP is not doing well as per our exit poll is the 18 to or 25. Or doing just a little better. 41 yeah, versus but strongly, a bit, but women strongly. doing strongly among women. But Dr. Shastri, you want to quickly uh, point out Yogi Adityanath? We've already, Rahul has virtually declared him our big I, winner today. If, but if, 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 no, no, it's probable. It's probable. If, if it's not, I just go uh, get Rajiv, my help. I think if you look at the intensity of victory that the exit polls are suggesting, I think that is basically because of the fact of both these leaders playing their role during the campaign in UP. And that's where the Samajwadi party had a disadvantage. Just one face was trying to spread across the state. The advantage that the BJP had is you had both the Prime Minister and the Chief Minister campaigning and bringing in different segments of support. They both represented different segments of support. You know, so you, no, you, you agree Yogi galvanizes the core? And Mr. Modi gets you the incremental vote. What I think, if I threw that I think, at you? I think this, this statement that I earlier made that this is start of a fresh era also is going to be, we are going to see this in caste politics. Caste politics is going down and down. I mean, you will see less amount of intensive caste politics. Only no, the upper caste thing that. No, 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 no that's the, not true. The lower I'm, caste I'm don't necessarily think there so. is There is fundamental shift, not just in Uttar Pradesh, but the rest part of the countries as well. There is there is a much more uh, stronger rhetoric around development. There's a stronger rhetoric it's around caste beneficiaries. plus development. See, one second. In a studio, you can be all you know, fancy this, and this proper was... by saying the importance of caste is coming down. You talk to netas when they're deciding who to give tickets to or how to approach different bowling boots, it's all about caste. See, Nobody if likes caste to wins, say this Samajwadi party will win today. We reality. will see that scene. What's that? If caste win today, uh, you will see Samajwadi party having No, clear, I'm clear making another today. point that the BJP the will win they've been able because to... they've got caste development and chemistry on their side if they do. It is always caste plus. In a state like Uttar Pradesh, you can't go away from the reality of caste. Anybody who says, oh, we're in a caste post society, you know, you're just sounding proper and prim by being on TV. That's not how elections are fought on the ground. Okay, we've got, uh, we, you know, we've got lots to look forward to Rahul. Uh, Rahul's going to give us lots of the number crunching. But we've also tried to sort of bring you new technological innovations. As you can see, I've got Moshmi Singh virtually immersed into the TV screen. There you are, Moshmi, outside 5 Kalidas Park, outside the residence of Yogi Adityanath. A lot of focus on uh, Yogi Adityanath, but uh, I just want a quick sense from you, uh, uh, Moshmi. The mood in Lucknow, uh, as I said, the road to Delhi leads through Lucknow. Is there a sense, a buzz? in this election or have people virtually reconciled to the fact this time ki paanch saal aur yogi ke hone hi hai even his critics are accepting it right rajdeep as you mentioned about the new technology you know uh, bjp was credited with mastering the art of getting technology into electioneering and now uh, we getting this technology right to our viewers but importantly the question that you asked you know, after the exit polls came out, Rajdeep, uh, uh, the temperatures changed here. You know, it was uh, the Samajwadi party was mercurial. Akhilesh Yadav's press conference, uh, he was very, looked very upset and very angry. Uh, Yogi Adityanath was in Gorakhpur. He didn't come out of his mud for the three days uh, post elections. Even uh, his press briefing on the exit poll was very, uh, very crisp and short, and he just thanked the pollsters. So, uh, both of the, both these leaders who are pitted against each other, they have many first to their uh, claim. Akhilesh Yadav was the youngest chief minister, right. Yogi Adityanath, the youngest MP uh, ever to be at the age of 26. And uh, Rajdeep, I can tell you one thing, uh, whatever the election results are, you know, uh, it will really decide the fate of both these leaders in the entire landscape of the uh, po uh, politics of Uttar Pradesh. That, that one can... I hope I hope you've gone and had Sharma ji ki chai. The best thing in Lucknow early morning is Sharma ji ki chai with ban maska. So that's what you've got to do. And I'm sure you know Lucknow even better than me. And you'll perhaps next time also tell me where I can get a good kachori. But enjoy yourself, Moshpi. It's going to be a long day for you. You know, we're talking about... No, I sometimes think, Rajdi, that you travel only to eat. Of course this I do. This whole business of election on my plate, this the is... netas are only accidents. Are boss, this is the greatest country in the world because of the variety of its food, among the many other reasons why India is the best place to do elections in. But very quickly, while we are obsessing about the BJP, just switch to the Congress. 
because today is also going to be a huge day for the Indian National Congress. Rahul Srivastava, you know, uh, the change in Punjab was made clearly with Rahul Gandhi's imprimatur. He said, I want change. I brought in Channi. Priyanka Gandhi Vadra 176 rallies and roadshows in Uttar Pradesh campaigned aggressively. A lot of political equity there as well. They need to win back either Goa, Manipura, Uttarakhand, anti incumbency. Is this going to be as big a day for the Congress also as it is for the BJP or the Ahmadbi party? Rajiv, if the Congress does not come back with some dividends from this, these five states, then I think this crisis in the Congress is going to deepen because a lot of the present crisis is because of the leadership at the top. Now, if the leadership at the top, this BJP loses ground, that crisis will deepen. No, but now, the when Congress you're already is... at the bottom of the ocean, what more yeah. deep can you go? Like, how wide do you go? Till the time they realize... See, they're still losing a lot of states, Raj, Rahul. They're still uh, ruling some states. Three and a half. Yes, it's three and a half. Well, out of which one is gone... Three and a three-fourths, actually, I now say. Half see, in Jharkhand, quarter in, say in Maharashtra, and three others. Say in Maharashtra, one of which they could lose today. In Maharashtra, the allies will say that you're a virtual nobody outside. So we may give you lesser seats. There is going to be a lot of crisis as far as the top is concerned. Remember, Congress is a pan-national party. It will also mean that players like Arvind Kejriwal will eat into further into the Congress votes. We are going, I think Congress is lost. I am going to redefine a lot of political the space. They're sleeping at the wheels. They're heading towards the bottom of the pit. They're sleeping at the wheels. Their eyes just won't open and they don't care. This is harakri of a kind that only Bahadur Shah Zafar did. I haven't seen in modern history anybody else walking into trouble in the way that the Congress is without wanting to do anything about it. They refuse to acknowledge that you know, there is a problem. problem Supriya now... Bhardava joins us. Okay, you want to make a point? You want to take a point? I no, said, I just no, decided no, 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 no. I'm going to give it back today. No, 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 not at all. Yeah, no, 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 fine, no, no, no problem. The problem Bring it is on. that when Rahul says all these things, bottom of the ocean, sleepwalking, what happens is the BJP IT cell picks it up and looks for my reaction. And my reaction is the same. <laughs> my reaction is very simple. I believe that I have said for the longest time, the Congress is a party in ICU. The Congress is a party facing a serious crisis, desperate for reinvention. All I am saying, and I keep saying this, it is, a, it is also a pan-Indian brand. It's a great brand. What it needs is reinvention. Now, you can't do Band-Aid when you are in ICU. No, it's got the chassis so of a McLaren suddenly... Mercedes. But you just have a driver who's sleeping at the wheels. You can have the fancier chassis. It won't run. Here, with AAP, you've got... Mm -hmm. uh, Maruti 800, but you've got a Schumacher running it. He's got audacity. You had Raghav Chadda the other day. Arvind Kejriwal already said, we're going to go national. There is audacity. So he makes that Maruti 800 go much faster than it actually does. Rahul Gandhi is sitting on the chassis of a McLaren. He simply doesn't know how to drive it. Till he gets, if somebody else comes in and drives the McLaren, the car can still go much faster. It has the components of being a national party. They can drive it faster. But unless the driver of the wheel knows what to do, it's always going to be the same thing. You put a bantamweight boxer against a super heavyweight boxer, you fight them 10 times, each of the bout ends the same way. In fact, when you ask Congress person, they say, we don't know whether there is a driver at all. They're <laughs> car <laughs> 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 without a driver. It's not a driver. It's a Dodge. They say it's a Dodge, not a McLaren. That's right. You know those old, those old cars that you would get in the 1970s, you look at them, yeah, India mein ye bhi gaadi chalti thi. It's almost like, you know, you moved from the ambassador to another generation, but the party is still in the ambassador age. So I think the Congress is going to have to reinvent. I hesitate to write off any party. Only no, no. simple you reason. You can't write off a party. You have to write off individuals. Individuals have to get out of the way. The party is strong. The party can bounce I back. I think that's Make a fair no mistake. Look at how Bhupesh Baghel revived the Congress in Chhattisgarh in a matter of months. It is possible. It is doable. The base exists. The opportunity exists. Sure. You have a man sleeping at the wheel. You'll never be able to revive.